If you work in polymer clay, then you're familiar with the concept of liquid clay, but there's a new one in town. In today's video, I'm going to do a little bit of a comparison of Lucy Clay Glassimer with the liquid clays you're already familiar with. Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another Friday Findings video at KeepsakeCrafts.net. So when I first got into polymer clay, learning that there was a liquid clay available out there was a revelation. You can use this as glue. You can do so many different techniques with it. Many of these, such as the Kato, are used to make a glossy finish on your polymer clay. And there are many different brands and they all have different properties and can be used for different things. So I was intrigued when the folks at Lucy Clay sent along some of their Glassimer. And these are colored gels, which is a very appropriate name and I'll show you why in a bit. And then this one is a liquid glue, but don't be confused. This is like your liquid clay in that it has to be baked in order to cure. It's not a glue like craft glue. It's not air dry. It has to be baked just like the any of these TLS, Translucent Liquid Sculpey, or any of the others that you're familiar with. So let me show you a couple of tests I did comparing them. First I did a test on a tile. Just, and I know it's hard to see, it's a white tile with, uh, with these clear or whitish things on them. But I don't know, here we go, now you can kind of see they all have very different viscosities. The TLS was the only one that really held its shape after I squiggled it onto the tile. And what's amazing about this stuff is how strong it is. You take a little piece, it's very, very strong and flexible. The thing that I use this most for, and I suspect most of you do, is to glue pieces together either raw clay to raw clay, especially raw clay to baked clay, or baked clay to baked clay. So this is the original translucent liquid Sculpey, and it's got a bit of a frosted appearance. You can see that on this sample here. And you can see through it here, I just did a little bit of a schmear at the bottom of my tile. The Kato liquid has a glossy appearance and it's also yellowed. It's the only one of the ones that I have. There are lots more out there. This is not an exhaustive sampling. It's the only one that did yellow a little bit, but what's interesting is that it retained its glossy appearance. And it's breaking apart, but it's entirely possible that I could have baked this at a higher temperature. Now it says 275. Often liquid clays can be baked at a slightly higher temperature than your polymer. It's one of those things that you have to test. And like polymer clay itself, often they are much stronger. So the Kato stays shiny, but it's definitely less viscous than the TLS, but it's probably more than any of the others. You can see all of these. I did squiggles and by the time I got them into the oven, and this one was on the tile first, they had all, these two especially, had melted into puddles. So keep that in mind if you're using these for decorative effects that you want to stand up, they're not all going to work for that. The Kato is the only one that stayed really nice and glossy. And it's also quite translucent, but again, yellowed just a little bit. Should I just leave those up there? There, now you can see. Now this is Fimo Deco Gel, and this is great for using for effects. I remember I bought this years ago to make faux opals. It dries nice and clear. You can hardly see it on the tile. It, Maybe has a tint, tiniest bit of yellow in appearance, but it really is nice and clear. But it doesn't, gosh, what am I doing? <laughs> it's on the tile pretty strong. There we go. And that's holding together nicely. And it's quite strong. And even this thick piece is quite see-through. Let's look at this thin little smear. 
These would be great if I use these for things other than gluing things together or decorative effects. It's great to make them into sheets that you can use for dragon wings or fairy wings or some kind of inlay where you're filling in perhaps a texture. Now this one is relatively new, the Sculpey Clear. And I like this one be, be for different things, and I'll show you more about that in a minute, because it is very thin and not viscous at all. It's quite runny. It didn't hold its shape at all when I squiggled it onto the tile. But it is beautifully clear and strong. You can see through it. And here's even a thinner bit that I smeared. These would be great for making things like window clings because it's got that kind of tacky nature. Very clear. And then the last one is the new one. Now there is this one called Liquid Glue and then there is another one, the Translucent Gel. So I have three of the color gels and I have the one Liquid Glue, but they're glue. But I'll show you the difference in the texture of baking of these in a moment. But just to show you this one, again, it's, you can use it for gluing polymer together. Yeah, I couldn't even I couldn't even get this to squiggle coming out of the bottle. It just kind of came out in blobs. But very strong and flexible. And <laughs> can be torn. Uh, and I you could use this in many of the same ways that you use the TLS. And again, it's very clear and see-through. So it's wonderful that we have this whole array of products that we can use for the different properties, whether you want super clarity or a glossy finish or to hold its shape or just to glue your clay together. Besides making sheets and techniques, one thing that I think this is really useful for is making molds, especially detailed molds where it can be difficult to press the clay in. So I did a little test and this is a mold from Create Along. So this is TLS and like I said, this was the most viscous and thickest of them all. And it did a pretty good job. This is flexible and strong. Even these thin little pieces are staying intact. I was concerned because it is so thick that it wouldn't fill in all the details of my piece. Let's compare that to another one. Here is the Sculpey Clear, which is very runny, so I had no concerns whatsoever that it would fill in the details. So here's these two pieces side by side. I'd say it's, if you, it really just depends on what you want to do. You can dust these with mica powders, fill in different areas with different colors, and then put your pieces in. It's really a much easier way of making molds than pressing in the clay and then having to shave off the back. You can just pour in a little liquid clay. Now again, the Kato yellowed like it did on the tile, and it also feels a little more brittle than the other ones. And it also, and uh, it's kind of crumbly. It might be that it was overbaked, although I'm not sure. I actually baked this entire thing. The Lucy Clay Glossomer needs a slightly higher temperature than most of these. Some of these say th uh, 275 to 300. Some of them say 275. I'm talking degrees Fahrenheit here. This one says 140 Celsius, which is 284 Fahrenheit. And so I baked this entire thing just for ease of uh, demonstration. I baked the entire thing at 285 for an hour. So, you know, you'll have to do some testing on your pieces depending on what it is you want to do. Here's the Fimo Deco Gel, and I apologize, a little bit of the Glossomer Gel ran into the back of this fish, and that's the only reason it's yellow. Otherwise, it's very nice and clear. Lots of detail. 
and nice and flexible and strong. This is the Lucy Clay. This is the glue, not the gel. And this also feels a little brittle, although not as brittle and crumbly as the Kato. But I, I'm really impressed. You can see these little details, the fin that sticks way down. You were able to get that detail in there. Now I saved this one for last because it's very different. This is the Glassomer Color Gel and it's like gooey. In fact, yeah, it's like sticking <laughs> to my finger. Blah. It feels kind of gross. Uh, this is a thick-ish mold. Like I said, I did bake this for an hour at the Lucy Clay recommended temperature. You definitely have to let it cool before you mess with it. This, this hole was because it looked gooey and I poked it but it did pick up the detail beautifully even that although it kind of missed there was a void under that fin so I might have needed to have poured it in uh, with a little bit more care and made sure looks like an air bubble was trapped under there but look how flexible this stuff is this stuff is gummy it's an entirely different feel than any of the others. I think the only one that comes close is the TLS Clear. But you know there are uh, ways that you can benefit from this. There are ways to use this. I will link to a video that Sandra Arts made or Artes, I don't know how to pronounce her name, but she has a YouTube channel. She does some amazingly creative and clever things and she's been working with the Glassomer lately and making just cool things. She just made uh, a, a, a jellyfish and she she baked a sheet of, she baked some of the glassomer in a mold and then cut out strips for the tentacles and used a heat gun to melt them together and then for her jellyfish body she actually used the fact that it was gooey right after coming out of the oven and and use that to stick her things together. I was just so impressed with how she used the properties that I thought were kind of negative. She turned them into a positive. So here are the other two colors of Glassomer. One thing that they are fantastic for, anything that's this thin and liquidy and pourable, is for this kind of a mold which I found very, very difficult to mold in polymer clay. It was just so thin and detailed that, okay, these are breaking apart, which uh, is, is okay. <laughs> I'm a little disappointed in that. I thought it would be stronger, but they are very thin, delicate pieces, and it's still usable. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Here we go. So great way to get a super detailed mold. I mean, you are not going to want to press polymer clay into a mold like this. That just doesn't sound like my idea of fun or even like this. So if I do this gently and don't tug on it too hard, which is what I was doing to that one, see this one came out all in one piece. Isn't that cool? That little bit of seaweed. And you can see how I used that here to make the seaweed and then just glued on pieces. I don't think this needs more seaweed, but you get the idea. You can add these pieces. And because it's so flexible, I was able to shape and mold it around my little fish. So it's a very different product than the liquid clays that you are used to. It's gummy and rubbery. It bakes at a different temperature. It has an entirely different viscosity and feel. But I'm sure with some creativity, you can find some ways to use it.